the Linux file system. The Linux file system has a tree-like structure, and this tree-like structure is also referred to sometimes as the directory tree. Windows users usually use the word folder to refer to the place where you have multiple files stored. However, in Linux terminology, folders are referred to as directories. So, what Windows users refer to as a folder, Linux users refer to as a directory. They are exactly the same concept, and both terms are used interchangeably. The directory tree. So pretty much like a family tree, in Linux file system, each directory or a file has a parent. However, the only exception for that is the root directory. The root directory has no parents and it is represented by a forward slash. The root directory is the first or the topmost directory in our tree. It contains files and subdirectories which in turn contain more files and subdirectories and so on. Now we will take a look at how the Linux file system is structured. First we have the root directory which is the beginning of everything. Underneath it we will find many subdirectories. We will only cover a subset of those in this video. We can find the bin directory which stands for binary. This directory contains executable programs and commands which can be used by all the users on the system. Another common directory is the opt. Opt stands for optional. This directory contains software programs that are not installed by default on the system. For example, if you are using Ubuntu, you may have noticed that Google Chrome is not installed by default. And if you do install Google Chrome, you will find it located under the opt directory. Another common directories are the home and the temporary directory, temp. Temp stands for temporary. In this directory, you will find temporary files, files which are often changed or deleted. Be careful and do not keep any file that you want to store for a long time underneath the temp directory or else you may lose it. Another common directory is the var directory. Var stands for variables. This directory contains variable data, data that changes over time. These include the mail spools, user databases, and the log files. Linux is a multi-user environment, which means that many users can use the system. Each user is given a directory under the home directory. As you can see, in this example we have John and David. John can have two directories, music and documents. Underneath the document, he can have a file phone.txt where he keeps track of all his friend phone numbers. We will refer to this file later on. Now we will mention two special directories. The first one is the current directory represented by a dot and the other one is the parent directory represented by two dots. Those are common to all directories in our system so you can find it underneath the root, the bin, the opt, the home, you can find it anywhere. So if we are currently working on the bin directory so one dot will represent the current which is the bin directory and two dots will represent the parent of the current which will be the root in this case. As you can see we have a tree-like structure that's why we call it the directory tree. There are two ways to access a file or a directory in Linux. You can, you can use the absolute pass name to access a file. An absolute pass begins with the root directory and follows the directory tree branch by branch until the pass to the desired directory or file is completed. For example, if you want to access phone.txt, 
you can use this absolute past name. We use a slash, a forward slash, to separate between directories. As you can see, you have to go to the home zone document font.txt to access the font. Another way is to use the relative path, which starts from the current working directory. So if you are currently working in John directory, you don't need to access the font.txt by the absolute path name. You can use the relative path name instead dot slash document slash font dot txt. The relative path name is usually shorter than the absolute path name.